Well, we're doing the Skype thing since Marius is on the other side of the planet. I'm talking to Marius Duda from Riverside. How are you today, my friend? I'm pretty well. Thank you so much. I just came back from holiday and I feel kind of rested. So uh, I, 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 I think also kind of ready for for the interview. Well, how was it? Uh, you shared some very beautiful pictures. It was really nice. I thought that I would have more uh, green uh, landscapes. Instead of this, I had lots of wasteland inspirations. <laughs> <laughs> Really great, thank you. Well, we're here to talk about the new album. It's the seventh album from the band, the first since the tragedy of losing one of your founding members. Um, that th that cannot be an easy decision to make to even go forward, was it? Uh, true, it was not easy, but uh, I think uh, what helped us was uh, the work uh, with I Have the Soundscape album because that was the most tragic moment in our. Uh, history and discography when we uh, suddenly in the studio w we left alone and we had to finish this album uh, only with uh, two of us because uh, our drummer Piotr uh, was not uh, uh, you know kind of involved into Eye of the Soundscape right uh, and um, after that when we did this album we said to each other that okay so it means that we can still going on i mean we can still carry on and maybe with another brand new studio album it won't be so bad so the time had come and and, and we decided to to continue now you said recently about the album that you've played a lot of video games i know from a personal you're, you're a huge video game fan like i am but you've played a lot of post-apocalyptic games where the 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 characters in the game were trying to survive in a world that is ended and i i that's an amazing analogy because in a way your world had kind of ended right and and you have poured those experiences into this album exactly so I just, you know, I, I always try to do the story which is a multi-dimensional and has uh, many layers, not only one. Uh, that's uh, that's weird, maybe for some people, uh, because uh, <laughs> they kind of expect from me, from me, finally the album without this deepness and the second meaning and third meaning and fourth <laughs> meaning. <laughs> Maybe one day I will just simply record that kind of album, but but not yet. I, I really wanted to connect uh, uh, lots of stuff on Wasteland, and exactly, it's 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 a story uh, about the living in a post-apocalyptic world, inspired by also sort of video games and um, like Fallout or The Last of Us, for instance. Right. And um, especially you probably. <laughs> you <know yourself>. <laughs> <laughs> when you. When you listen to the Guardian Angel uh, lyrics, you can you can have some kind of connections, or you can listen some kind of connections with uh, um, uh, with uh, the Last of Us heroes, right? Right. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, that's the wasteland, and the, the the idea for this album also was connected with those tragic events that happened right. in the back. This is the story about our band, but. Uh, uh, I really wanted to focus not on the past this time, but about but, but wanted to focus on the survivals, on the people that's left, on the three of us. That's why I also wanted to mark that we can handle to record this album as a trio, and we are a trio right now because it's kind of it kind of fits to to this a whole wasteland story and everything. Mm -hmm. But there's a third uh, stuff, uh, I mean, the third thing connected with the wasteland and the whole story. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, for, for many people, the wasteland can be also the situation that we've got now in the world. You know? Right. For, for some people, wasteland can be Poland or, or some kind of stuff like that. <laughs> so um, we live in a kind of uncertain times. So I thought that uh, it will fit. An appropriate theme for the album. Exactly. One of it many layers. Of our times. So. <laughs> well, now, some of the greatest, I, I got to tell you, being a huge fan since day one, since the first album, and you guys just grabbed me and haven't let go since, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the vibe on this album that it, it is it is a nod to the past. There's some elements that, that are definitely Riverside, but it's definitely a step forward. In the studio, you had to record some things differently. What what was different from this one, not just missing a member, but you tried some different techniques, some different vocal things, some different melody things. You know, what was what was going on while you were trying this experimental new, these new sounds and things? You know, first thing, uh, why we decided to be a trio? That's, that's, that's um, I, let me start 
from this point. We decided to be a trio also to uh, try some some new solutions in the studio. Because mm-hmm. for instance, let's 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 see that okay, Maché is a fourth member of the band, and we are gathered gathered together in, in the rehearsal room, and we started jamming and doing some kind of stuff, and probably we would release another Pink Floydish album or something like that, more or less. <laughs> but, but now, uh, okay, we had to do something with that, right? We, mm-hmm. we don't have a guitar player, so what, what's now? And fortunately, I, mm, you know, from the very beginning, I was the main guy who, who came up uh, with uh, all these ritual, guitar riffs in Riverside. Mm-hmm. Piotr was more like the solo guy, you know, he, he created really perfect emotions, playing solos, playing some kind of uh, soundscape and stuff, soundscape, but he didn't uh, play rhythmic guitar um, and or acoustic guitar. That was all on me. So I start, I said, okay, so I, I, I will just simply do what I did in the past and uh, nothing will change. But okay, we don't have a guitar, so I, I need to play the guitar, a rhythmic guitar right now. But I also, mm, I also discovered a pretty interesting instrument uh, recently, which is called uh, piccolo bass. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sounds like the guitar when you can just uh, just pl- plug it to some distortion. So uh, I, we did a demo, but mostly on that, and we said, okay, it sounds pretty nice. We can we can do this, you know. And uh, that was the beginning. Later, I just add up the guitar and everything, and we had almost the entire album. But of course, to create this specific Riverside space. I also decided to use some guests to to help me to fill the space with uh, um, the specific sounds and uh, emotions. So Machi Miller played fantastic solos. Uh, the same Michal Yelone, mm-hmm. the violin the violinist. He played on violin. And it, it, I think it's 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 perfect when he trying to add up uh, all these new new things. You know, mm-hmm. but uh, just just. At, at the end, I, I will tell you what was really important for me. It should, it should be connected with uh, with the title, with this post-apocalyptic theme. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, so this is the end of the world. What 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 I have in my hand? Probably only the 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 acoustic guitar with rusty strings, you know, the basic <laughs> instrument, the right? Organ sound, and that should be my my main instrument for this album, not electronic sounds, you know, all the computers and keyboards and that are broken and they are not exist, you know, we're Correct. in a different world now. So the acoustic guitar became the, the main instrument on this album. And I wanted to uh, use this uh, and the same, you know, like singing with the lower voice, you know, I just imagine myself as a cowboy somewhere in the desert, you know, <laughs> singing on this guitar with the lower voice, you know, because that's, that's kind of, that was kind of similar to me. And so that was the, the, the biggest uh, differences and influences. And I just wanted to use the fact that we became a trio. And now, because we can't do everything, we can try to, to create different uh, ideas because of the fact that, uh, you know, there are some ranges <laughs> or some <laughs> boundaries. Um, but I wanted to use that in a, in a, in a positive way. Well, and challenging yourself as a musician and as a band together, uh, you've put out some great work. Uh, some of the best albums of all time. I, I like to go back to Fleetwood Mac Rumors. The members of that band were all divorcing themselves, you know, while they were recording that album, and they were they poured every single experience that they were the good, the bad, the heartbreak, the 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 you know the the desolation, the the joy of finding someone new. All that poured into an album, and I, I really think that's kind of what you guys have done here. Like I'm not on the inside of the band or anything, but as a listener, I'm listening to the album, and and I get the wasteland and the video game references, and I get the modern day references. But I also hear a group of musicians who are going, "Here's what we can do." Well, uh, that was not a easy year, 2016. Right. Um, for me, especially because I, I was after uh, in 2014, 2015. I was, you know, I was after a divorce. I was after. Uh, my, my friend died, to whom I was, I, uh, to whom I wrote towards the blue horizon. That mm-hmm. unfortunately later it happened, uh, someone else's song, right? 
Uh, but uh, 2016 was not was not perfect for me because uh, some other stuff came later, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I when I decided to deal with that on my uh, lunatic soul project, right? Um, uh, I I said to myself, okay, I I don't want to deal with that in this you know dark way that I did, for instance, on the uh, Lunatic Soul walking on the flashlight beam. Mm -hmm. So I just put myself somewhere uh, in, in the future a bit, and uh, Lunatic Soul fractured and Lunatic Soul under the fragmented sky. It was written uh, from the perspective of someone who already, you know, got deal with the past, who said, OK, uh, I need to move on. I, I need to stand up on my own to feed. And that's it. And I, I remember that I just postponed um, working on the new Riverside. Uh, actually, under the fragmented sky, it was not uh, planned. You know, I, I thought that I would start the new Riverside, but I just couldn't find the idea, and uh, so I just focused on uh, on next lunatic soul. Right. But after that, uh, when finally, when I had finally time for for, for Riverside. I started to compose all these songs, and uh, the music just came out of me. I just, just it was so natural. Uh, around October, November, November, December, um, December, when we decided to play demo, I had everything. I, I, Michael brought one of his songs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the last, the the, clo the closer um, of, of Wasteland. And I said, okay, so we've got the, the, the whole album right now. And this was funny because I thought that I made this deal with the past, with the pain, with the grief on Lunatic Soul albums. But no, <laughs> kind of subconsciously, um, all these, uh, the, the most, I don't, I don't know, mature emotions, uh, they probably, they, they were waiting somewhere in my head, especially for, for, for Riverside, because Riverside should deal with the past too, somehow, and uh, all these uh, dark, uh, melancholy uh, things just just came out of me. Not on lunatic soul, but especially f f on riverside. Right. Mm -hmm. So wait, that's why wasteland is kind of important because for me it's just like it's funny because uh, within one year I did three albums, you know, fractured uh, under the fragmented sky and wasteland. But but wasteland, this is the album with with this. A proper amount of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> All these things that happened, right? So I think that yeah, it's really important album. I'm not sure if it's the best. For sure, it's really original. But 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 I'm I'm pretty sure that this is one of the most important albums uh, in in, Rivers, in Riverside discography and in, in my entire career. You know, as a as a, as an artist, as a musician, as a musician. And as a fan, I have to agree. I like what you said in an earlier interview that every band comes out and says, this is our best work, you know, this is, and, and you didn't really want to say that because you think all of your things have been unique and interesting and worth putting out there. And I totally agree. But I would definitely put this up there with, you know, with the best of your work. It, it is a mature album. It's different. It still sounds like Riverside, but it, I ha it, it pulls me back to listening to it, unlike most albums that have come out this year. Uh, for sure, I'm happy that we kind of get rid of uh, the influences that uh, lots of people still want to, you know, uh, just put right next to our name. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see all these uh, prog metal influences anymore in here. Uh, it was funny when we uh, revealed Veil of Tears. I, I was so happy that for the first time people started to write, because I was, uh, yeah, I, I have to admit that I was reading all these cons. <laughs> 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 But, but it was funny for me because there was no, uh, you know, like Porcupine Tree, Dream Theater, Anathema kind of stuff. Right. Not again. You know, not, not anymore. It was just like, oh, it sounds like Judas Priest. Oh, it's Muse. Oh, it's, <laughs> oh, it's this. Oh, it's like Tool. And I said, what? You know, okay. That's, uh, from, from one perspective, it's, it's what? But from the other, okay, I'm so glad that we kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe, let's say, uh, the Riverside Wasteland, it's not a strict, you know, progressive album. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, this is the live, the live show. That's it. So, yeah, exactly. So, no, unless it was the dog from the video game. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't. Anyway. I can multitask, but I couldn't do those two things at the same time, no. 
but anyway, you know, I'm so happy that uh, we, we did something which is, I don't know, maybe more alternative, alternative this time, or even not so proggy. But thanks to this, it's it's even more progressive than, than our previous albums. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy for the final result. I, I, it definitely is proggy, though. <laughs> There's so it, it can be proggy too, you know. If in the wider sense, that kind of music is always uh, you know, pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have started playing some shows. So having a new touring member in the band that changes things dynamically on stage, doesn't it? Yes, we started to even uh, prepare, and uh, well, we said that we are a trio right now. But uh, on live uh, version, maybe it will be even five people on the stage. You know, you know, we decide changes. And uh, I'm going to play in some parts on my piccolo bass. So it will be weird to see me not playing bass guitar. For instance, bass will be on the keyboards, or there will be some other guy who will play bass guitar. And we'll do some kind of switches, so it will be kind of interesting and uh, not so uh, normal as it used to be. <laughs> uh, but thanks to this, I think the music will also uh, sound. And uh, yeah, we will... Uh, we will represent something else right now, um, but, but, but we'll see. For sure, uh, we're playing the bigger tour and uh, the bigger production, uh, some new lights, new maybe visuals and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, the, the wasteland is coming. <laughs> so we can expect a U.S. tour next year. Yes, uh, around May, I think we have got some plans. Already, Rossfest is already announced. And we, we also uh, are going to play in February, I guess. I do not remember. Uh, Cruise to the Edge is coming too. Oh, yeah. So, so maybe we will be there somewhere be, between one uh, drink and another. And, <laughs> but but, but the, 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 the normal, proper uh, US adventure will start uh, on May. Can't wait for it. Matter of fact, I have a request. Um, a gentleman by the name of Richard owns the Record Rack here in South Florida. He says if you have a South Florida date, you must agree to do an in-store signing at his record store. Actually, uh, that's another new stuff uh, coming because uh, uh, during European uh, tour, uh, Polish tour, I'm going to play the guitar um, together with Michael and we're preparing some kind of short acoustic uh, sets oh how cool uh, would that be yeah I mean, it's you know now we can do that right right uh, so um so yeah that that's something that for sure will appear also in riverside um performances we'll talk between now and then yeah well, Marius, thanks for taking the time out today. I know you have a lot of interviews scheduled. I was one of the early ones, so I, I like to catch it early and fresh. Good luck with the rest of them. I absolutely love the album. It comes out at the end of September. Everybody needs to buy a copy, right? And pre-order it. Pre-ordering is very important because they could run out or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's very true. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah, great. Well, thank you, Marius, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, thank you very much, and I'd like to, of course... Say hello to everybody, to your to listeners of your radio, and uh, we promise to give you lots of very interesting emotions uh, during our upcoming tour. But uh, of course, first we hope that you 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 will enjoy with the waste and album because we put lots of um, love, inspiration, and, and 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 emotions to that record. And I I hope I do hope that you will hear that. Thank you very much. Love it. Thank you very much, Marius. Thank you, bye.